Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about otrotide. Otrotide is a medication, okay? And I'll be going through the uses, the side effects, and warning. With that in mind, let's go. Otrotide could appear at pharmaceutical stores as either cytostatin or sandostatin la depot or otrotide acetate omega depends on your jurisdiction and the pharmaceutical company supply medication to your center uh, is a class of medication that is used as anti-diarrhea as an antidote and somatostatin analog It will appear in form of intramuscular kit or in form of sandostatin la depot. And that will be 10 milligram, 20 milligram, or 30 milligram. The injection forms are available as sandostatin 50 microgram per mil or 100 microgram per mil, 200 microgram per mil. 500 microgram per mil or a thousand microgram per mil. It could be administered through intravenous route, subcutaneous route, IM, that is intramuscular or depot. Uses. Ultratrite is useful in diabetes mellitus, in chemotherapy, in HIV, graft versus host disease, carcinoid crisis, medullary thyroid carcinoma, bipomas, short bowel syndrome, bone marrow transplant, or chronic diarrhea, and the list goes on to include Zollinga Ellison syndrome, thymoma or advanced timing malignancy, sulfonylurea induced hypoglycemia, also useful in malignant bowel obstruction, hepaturrenal syndrome, gastroesophageal varicella hemorrhage, given hematemesis, gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors that is metastatic in nature, acromegaly, and of course, hypothalamic obesity. I will go through some few selected cases of how we can use octotride. And the first on the list will be in case of acromegaly. You can give ototrides subcute or intravenously. It will be proper to administer 50 microgram TID. And you can increase up to 100 microgram TID. The maximum range is 300 microgram to 1,500 microgram per day. You can have medication stopped for four weeks every one year. Let me repeat that. If you are treating acromegaly and you are giving it subcutaneously or intravenously at the dose between 50 microgram to the maximum dosage of 300 microgram to 1,500 microgram per day, then you have to stop the medication for four weeks every one year. Okay? During the four weeks, you have to check the growth hormone level and IGF, meaning insulin-like growth factor one level. You have to assay the levels of those two. Then somebody is on subcute and you want to switch over to depot. You have to stabilize on subcute for two weeks, then switch to the depot. You can give 20 milligram IM every four weeks for 
three months. Let me repeat, you can give 20 milligram IM intramuscularly every month or every four weeks for three months. You will review your parameters, that is the growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor one level. So if the growth hormone is less than or equal to one nanogram per mil, or if insulin-like growth factor is normal, then you reduce ultratite to 10 milligram intramuscularly every four weeks. Remember, you started with 20 milligram intramuscularly, but you are getting good report from the growth hormone and you are getting good report from insulin like growth factor one, then you don't need to increase the ultratite anymore. As a matter of fact, you reduce it to half, 10 milligram intramuscularly every four weeks. Some will say every month, but I think every four weeks will be more appropriate because we'll be able to measure what exactly the duration is. Because months are not the same. February could be 28 or 29. Or March could be 31. You know, April could be 30 and so on. Still on selected cases, you have to titrate the dose of the acromegaly treatment you uh, now embarking on in the previous slide. You titrate the dose based on growth hormone and insulin growth uh, factor one. If growth hormone is greater than 2.5 nanogram per mil and insulin like growth factor one is also raised, then you increase the level of ultratide to 30 milligram intramuscularly every four weeks. Remember, I've just said a previous slide that if the value of growth hormone is anything less than one nanogram per mil and the level of insulin like growth factor is dropping, then you reduce ultratide. Now, you are getting a value of growth hormone that is 2.5 nanogram per mil or greater, and insulin like growth factor one level is also elevated, then you increase the ultratide to 30 milligram. If you have used maximum ultratide and you are not winning, then add something else. Add a growth hormone receptor antagonist called Pegivagin. Pegvisomant, Pegvisomant, or you can add a dopamine agonist. If the situation at hand is involving casinal crisis and is intraoperatively, and you are dealing with hypotension, just set your IV line, give to try intravenously 500 to 1000 microgram bolus then you repeat that every five minutes until the symptoms are under control or you may choose to give it bolus to be followed by 50 to 200 microgram per hour continuous infusion while the procedure will still be ongoing If you are dealing with diarrhea, start with intravenous dosage of 50 microgram to 100 microgram every eight hours. You can increase by 100 microgram per dose at 48 hours intervals. For example, you are dealing with chronic diarrhea in a patient and you have chosen to use octotide. The first thing to do is give octotide at 50 microgram every eight hours for 48 hours. But if you are not winning, then after 48 hours, you can increase the dosage of the ultratide to 150 microgram every eight hours. After that eight hours, a 48 hours complete and you are still not winning, you can increase to 250 microgram 
every eight hours for another 48 hours. So the maximum you could reach every eight hours is 500 micrograms. Okay, if you are dealing with chronic diarrhea that is associated with chemotherapy, then you can give ototide 100 microgram to 150 micrograms of Q every eight hours. But IV or infusion could be used if the situation is complicated. If the diarrhea is associated with graft versus host disease, then you can use IV 500 microgram every eight hours, but stop within 24 hours of diarrhea resolution. If not, you might be treating the patient to paralytic ileus. So to prevent paralytic ileus, stop within 24 hours of diarrhea resolution. You can't give the ototide more than seven days. Let me repeat, you can't give the ototide for more than seven days if you are using the ototide through this route for this purpose, growth versus host disease. The last example I'm gonna give is upper gastrointestinal bleeding or hematemesis. You can give intravenous antibiotics empirically for seven days if you are dealing with associated cirrhosis. Also, you can give your ototide 50 microgram bolus. Then continue infusion at 50 microgram per hour for the next five days. You can repeat bolus in the first four hours if hemorrhage is not controlled. Note this, in renal impairment, clearance is reduced by 50%. So discuss with a pharmacist or else you might be double dosing. In hepatic impairment, the half-life is prolonged. Clearance is reduced and you are forced to use lower doses. Also discuss with your pharmacist. In pediatrics, be very, very careful. It would be nice if you can contact your pediatrician or your pharmacist. However, if you are stuck and you can reach any of them, one to four microgram per kilogram per hour infusion or one to five microgram per kilogram per dose every eight hours of killed or one to two microgram per kilogram bolus IV could be administered, but then don't take the risk. Contact some other physicians around you, pediatrician or pharmacist, or you don't use it at all. In elderly, please start very low and increase slowly. The adverse reactions, bradycardia. No one will want to get into that because that could kill. Abtention, that's why it's used in casino crisis with hypotension. Fatigue, headache, dizziness, pain, pruritus, alopecia. That is those that are using it for a long period of time. Abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, but an irony. It's used to treat diarrhea, but also could induce diarrhea, right? Depends on the dosage. Nausea, platelets, pelitizes, anemia. Still on adverse reactions, there could be pain at the injection site, back pain, atropathy, myalgia, upper respiratory tract infection, flushing, edema, goiter, hypothyroidism, anesmos, Sertoria, urinary tract infection, blood vision, epistasis, pulmonary embolism, malignant aptemia, ascites, pleural effusion, deafness, decreased libido, and so on. 
Okay, warnings or precautions. First, it's going to be wise to be sure that this patient that will be taking nutritide has not had any history of hypersensitivity to ototide or any of its component. So we're going to take history, family history and personal history of reaction to ototide. But if we can't get that, okay, we can place the patient on ototide, but we have to inform and involve the nurses to watch out for signs of hypersensitivity or anaphylactic reaction. And the first thing is stop the medication if it is infusion, then give me a shot immediately. But if it is not infusion, if it is subcute or IM or IV bolus, then give me a shot immediately. The warnings or precautions will include if you are dealing with someone and you are suspecting vitamin B12 deficiency, it is better you take your samples for your test before administering octotide. The reason is, with octotide, you are likely going to get abnormal children's test. And you should monitor for cholelithiasis because there's likelihood of decreased biosecretion and prevention of gallbladder contractility. We have to use with caution in people with insulinoma. Originally, they were dealing with apoglycemia, but in the presence of ultratide, the apoglycemic effect will be worse. It suppresses thyrostimulating hormone, so watch out for abnormality of thyroid gland. Monitor for pancreatitis and be careful in heart failure. Why that? It could give bradycardia. Be careful in hepatic and renal impairment because you may be double dosing. Be careful in pediatric age group. It is going to be wise to contact your pediatrician or the pharmacist. For drug drug interaction, I will leave you and your pharmacist to write to that. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get all my presentations immediately they are published. I appreciate it.